All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to talk about understanding oil patterns and the strategies that you should be using. Stay tuned. All right, so when we talk about oil patterns, Kyle, they can be extremely, extremely tricky or they can be unbelievably yes. simple. There are times when we bowl where you just never have to move and you're lined up for the entire duration of the tournament. And there's also times where we're moving every frame, it feels like, or changing balls or doing something different. And there's ways that you can create or paint a picture in your head that allows you to stay on top of the moves and to understand what the correct strategy is. So Kyle, when you're talking about an oil pattern and getting lined up and trying to win a tournament or bull good in your league, what are some of the strategies that you come up with that help you do that? Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is we want to paint that picture. The oil is invisible. We can't see it. Every lane looks the same to the naked eye, but obviously they're far from the same. So especially in the practice session, we got to really start working on developing that picture. And we're going to teach you guys how to do it in three simple shots. Now, this strategy, this strategy can work for whatever oil pattern is out there. It's universal. It's gonna give you an idea in just three shots on how it's gonna work. So the first shot we wanna do is we wanna throw it up five. This is gonna help us start our pitcher. We wanna throw it up five to see, is it hooked? Does it hook out there? Does it go straight? What's it doing? And that way we can now use that knowledge to see, should we play there? Should we move left? What should we do? So. I'm gonna throw a shot here up five. I Very wanna normal make shot. Make a comment real quick. We get yeah. a lot of uh, uh, discussion about like patterns and have you bowled on this pattern before and what did you do on this pattern and what the pattern name is. And I don't pay attention to any of that anymore. Um, I don't care what pattern I'm bowling on, the name of it, the length of it. I just do this system and that tells me everything I need to know. The, the piece of paper, the name of the pattern, none of that tells you anything. Um, this tells you exactly what the strategy should be um, and it's the same for a 20-foot pattern or an 80-foot pattern It's literally the same process 80-foot pattern 80 would be pattern a little difficult be a little <laughs> <laughs> So right. okay, so we're starting to paint the picture here I'm gonna throw a shot out five and let's see what exactly it does And that shot can be your first shot. It doesn't have to be full speed. It doesn't have, sometimes throwing balls even slower will help you gain a little bit more information, but that could be your warm up shot. That can be two mile an hour, up five. You just want to see where the ball is hooking and how much it's hooking. Yeah, and I was a little warmed up there, but okay. So we started the process here. Say that was my first shot. We threw it up five, hooked way too much, right? So now I'm going to make a bigger jump in. I like to go around 15. So more around 15 to see, okay, uh, now I know outside of five is hooking. There should be some dry out there. We're trying to find oil to get our ball to go down the lane. So I'm thinking I like to go around 15 to say, okay, is it going to hook too much? Is it going to go too long? What exactly is going on? And then we'll, uh, we'll reassess after that. Okay. So now after two shots, we have one that hit the pocket. So we have an idea of where we should be, or could potentially be standing. Right. After two shots. Yeah, after two shots. So, and like I said, this this goes for any pattern. I like to get an idea because it's there's nothing worse when you're bowling on a pattern to be like, man, what's gonna happen if I go up five? Because I haven't thrown a shot there. It's like, you spent 10 minutes of practice and you never tried a shot up five. Then you don't have the picture painted and there's just uncertainty and we don't want uncertainty. Okay, so now we have our third shot. So our first shot hooked too much off the gutter. Our second shot, we went around 15, looked good. But now I still want to paint that picture. We're still in practice. Remember, this is only our third shot. I want to get inside deep and I want to see, okay, if I move into 23, I like to go somewhere around there. Is it going to go too far down the lane or is it going to hook from there? So we just keep painting the picture. So. Yep. I'm gonna go around 23 at the arrows. I'm not gonna change much of how, how I threw it before. We'll just get an idea. Okay, so that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, if we get really far right, it hooks too much. If we get in the middle, it seems right. And if we get too far left, it hooks too little, which tells me that there's just a bunch of oil in the middle of the line, not so much on the outside part of the line 
And so that's that's the picture we've painted so far, just in three shots. Yeah. So, and this is this is just practice. Now, Brad, obviously, it's easy to get lined up in practice. We need to have a little bit of an understanding of the oil pattern in practice. But once tournament starts, it changes because obviously the oil pattern is always changing. So, what is something for the people watching that they can implement when they're bowling to? keep painting that picture, keep understanding what's going on. What do they need to do? Well, as you're bowling, the pattern changes so much. And like I said, sometimes it changes very little and sometimes it changes a lot. It's nice to uh, differentiate, but I want to stress the power of the people around you. Yeah. So for example, you just threw that third shot on a very far inside deep line. While you're throwing your first shot up five, um, there may be people around you that are playing that deep line and you can watch their ball go down the lane and see how far it goes down the lane before it hooks. How much is it pushing? How much is it hooking? To get an idea of what that looks like before you attempt your third shot of that right. deep in line. Okay. And, and that's what happens throughout the entire duration of the tournament. You never stop paying attention to your surroundings. And I'll give you an example. If you're bowling on one pair and everyone on your pair plays that deep line and you guys all bowl great and you go to your next pair because it's a tournament and you're moving pairs and no one on that pair before you played that deep line you're going to have to make some changes to your strategy because they the oil on that new pair is not the way that you guys made the oil on this pair and that's what happens every single game um, if you're on game 15 that day it's the same amount of paying attention to the people around you so that can help you develop your strategy as the the practice session and then game one. Um, that never stops. Uh, as professional bowlers, we compete at the highest level possible and we are. that is the one thing that we do the most is we pay attention to everyone else. What's Belmo doing? What's EJ doing? What's Dom doing? What's Bill doing? What are their strategies? How are they bowling? If somebody bowled a 250 and they're playing up the gutter, yeah. that means it's possible, you know, and, that, and if you get lost, you may have to adapt that strategy. Um, and it's just paying attention. The more you pay attention, the more you learn. So. Yeah, so guys, the idea is painting that picture and that picture is never changing. As you're bowling a block, that picture is gonna change because oil is being taken off the lane. And if you go to a new pair, you may think you're throwing it bad, but there's a good chance it could be the lane is just playing different. Something is different about that pair. And although it's not your fault, that it's playing different. It is your job to realize why it's playing playing different, make the correct adjustments, and still stay lined up and strike. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. And if you enjoyed this video and want more tips like this, please check out the free gift below. We give you a drill that not only we use, but all of our students use. It's called the seven arrows drill. It's a drill that's gonna help you improve your versatility. And it's something that we are practicing all the time. So click the link below, check out that free gift. We'll see you guys later.